good afternoon today we are going into the 19th lecture of systems engineering and today we are getting into what we call as the second most important aspect of it called functional functional analysis so the functional analysis and allocation is a very important step in systems engineering because once you do the requirement analysis from there we move into what we call as a function functional analysis where we convert the requirements specified by the user into specific functions of the system and then allocate performance requirements accordingly so we will see in detail what is functional analysis and how it is important before we do the third aspect which is called as the design synthesis so in the system engineering recap we all know that the systems engineering process we all know that it is a it transforms or it converts okay the transforms another word to use it is called converts okay or uh, distills is another word that people use okay or we converge so converts distills transforms any of these words are fine the functional performance interface and other requirements these are all the requirements that are obtained during the initial phase the requirement analysis phase into coherent description of system functions so the um, these requirements all these requirements are identified during requirement analysis phase so initially when we are doing the requirement analysis we actually get all these requirements out of that also if you think about it these requirement analysis what we talk about it is also significant because you want to convert it into a description of system functions well the question obviously is that why do you need the system functions think about it they are required to guide the design synthesis whose design synthesis of the system so when you are going to design the system when you are going to synthesize the design of the system we require the system functions to actually description a coherent description of the system function is necessary uh, coherent description in a sense means that it is logical it makes sense and it is coherent and consistent okay so uh, in a way the question obviously is that why is it necessary for the design synthesis because the reason is the designer must know the designer who which designer the designer of the system he must know number 1 what is the mo most important thing he need to know what the system must do this is the functionality of the system what the system must do second how well the system must do what it is supposed to do what it is supposed to do then the third is what are the constraints what are the constraints that limit limit the flexibility flexibility of the system design so as a system designer he should know what the system must do in a way the functions or goals or aims all these kind of things why is the system being designed that kind of a question how well the system must do it is to an extent this we can talk about this performance 
and then what are the constraints ok, these are the restrictions. These are important for anybody you know to who is working on uh, any any aspect of a uh, uh, system design or uh, in, any as any uh, person who is working in developing a new system this is very important. So, uh, one obvious question that we always ask is you know what is the functional analysis. So, it is kind of like a step we can talk about it is these are the major steps or this now following steps these are the major steps involved in this process where we arrange functions in a logical sequence ok. So, this means uh, the functions of the system uh, obtained during requirement analysis. All these things were obtained at the time of requirement analysis. So, arrange functions in a logical sequence, then you all we decompose higher level functions into lower level functions ok. So, higher level functions mean somebody would say you know uh, something like a rapid transportation ok or instead of rapid transportation we might create something called as mobility ok. So, a higher level function could be mobility. The lower level function it would be how the transportation is done is done or how mobility is achieved that is one thing. So, how so what are the steps involved in achieving that? So, that we will see an example and then you it probably be more clear to you, but the aim is to decompose higher level functions into lower level functions and then we allocate performance aspects allocate performance aspects from higher level functions to lower level functions ok. So, uh, the uh, performance aspects again these are obtained at the time of requirement analysis. So, the user might have given uh, feedback in the form of uh, in a different form which has resulted in creating this um, the high level functions and from there low level functions are derived. But the performance aspects these performance aspects these performance aspects are typically attributed with the higher level functions. They have to be broken down into lower level functions. So, this is where the breaking down of performance aspects happen ok. The two major tools that are used as part of it is called the functional block diagrams people also called as FBD mostly and another tool is called timeline analysis. Uh, we will see this later down the road in the uh, subsequent lectures what these tools are, but just the names are mentioned here for the time being ok. So, the main aspect here is the output of this whole stuff all function uh, functional analysis is to is the functional architecture of the system. So, this is the functional architecture of the system. So, what do you mean fun functional architecture? It is a description of the system, it is a system description in terms of functions and performance parameters. So, what we talk about it is it is a uh, it, it is it, this is not a physical description this is the most important thing that we need to remember not a physical description of the system, but rather it is a functional description uh, or a description of the system or a system description in terms of functions and performance parameters. What are the functions that the system will accomplish? Functions that the system is capable of uh, fulfilling plus the uh, performance 
performance limit performance uh, parameters or what are the limitations you can also think about it as performance limitations as part of this okay this is also done to ensure something called as ensure traceability we mentioned this earlier in the lecture ensure traceability from uh, higher level to lower level functions okay so this functional analysis ensure that the higher level traceability the traceability of requirements specified by the user and uh, are narrowed down to the uh, lower level functions well obviously uh, one of the most the aspects about functions obviously people say what are functions i mean i don't understand what the definition of the function is so this is a very big question what are functions or how do we talk about functions in a simpler sense functions are functions are discrete actions okay and these discrete actions these discrete actions are necessary to accomplish the objectives of the system okay uh, so the the main aim is to ob accomplish the objectives of the system and the discrete actions that are necessary to accomplish the objectives of the system is called as a uh, function or functions okay is typically described using action verbs okay uh, so an example is functions or another thing about thing about function is functions may be stated explicitly or they may be derived they may be derived from stated user requirements so some of the functions might be stated explicitly who states it explicitly obviously the user or sometimes the user might given some requirements from which we derive those functions so the thing is that uh, as i said uh, as it is written here it is stated explicitly or derived from stated requirements of the user okay so obviously yes um, it is uh, important that the system this functions the important part is it is important it's very important that the system is capable of accomplishing accomplishing these functions so that the stated objectives can be fulfilled so in a way completing these accomplishing these functions they are important to complete the fulfilling the objectives of the system that is the critical aspect of these functions so once you are able to describe the system in term of its functions and if the system is capable of fulfilling all these functions that you stated then it is the system will be able to in that process system will be able to uh, fulfill the objectives of the uh, state its stated objectives and how are these functions performed the question is how are these functions performed or how are they accomplished okay or how are they accomplished the answer to this question is it is performed or accomplished by a combination of equipment personnel facilities all those kind of things okay uh, it can also other things that are involved are software okay there is there can be hardware then there are you know other uh, specific aspects like uh, you know uh, support systems etc there are many things that actually would come into picture but to perform these functions you require equipment some sort of equipment 
personal, facility, software, hardware, support systems, etc. So, using or combinations of these combinations, one or few or all those combinations are possible. So, by combining different aspects of the system, these functions are performed or accomplished. So, the, uh, the functional analysis to a large extent, what it does is, it, it facilitates, it is a facilitation process. Let us say functional analysis is a facilitation process that decomposes requirements into functions into let us call it as low level functions while ensuring traceability. So, here you are decompose the requirements, the customer requirements into low level functions while ensuring traceability which means the performance requirements or the performance uh, aspects that are attributed to the higher level functions are appropriately brought down to the lower level of the system. Okay. So, one other aspect is uh, always remember we talked about something called as recursive and iterative approach. So, the functional analysis F A is always derived from its higher level. So, at any level you are looking at this, the details and aspects of this are coming from some level higher than this. Okay. So, and another thing is that uh, you should also understand the fact that it is each level, okay, if you think about this, each level uh, decides the uh, description of its lower level. So, when you are doing a functional, uh, functional analysis at a particular level, it is, it has its origin from the higher level but it is also going to determine its lower level because you are going to use wherever level you are to go further level down until you reach the appropriate level which you are satisfied with the components of the system. Okay. So, uh, this type of a system approach is called as a top down process. Top down process means we actually move from the top to the bottom. So, some of the major aspects Okay, major uh, major things or major goals for doing functional analysis is the definition of system in terms or in functional terms. So that means you know. So what we are doing is it is basically in a way decomposing top level functions uh, into what we call as sub functions. We are decomposing top level functions into sub functions that is that is successively so you see successively identifying identifying lower levels or successively identifying lower levels at which what what actions the system will do. So, the main question here is at lower levels and so you successively decomposing the top level functions into sub functions where what we are trying to do is we are identifying at lower levels what actions this is in inverted commas because you are specifically trying to find what actions the system will do okay. that is one part. Second is translate the higher level performance requirements. Okay. So, this translation is happens it translates it into translates to what? It gets translated into detailed detailed functional detailed functional and 
performance design criteria or in a simple way to say it as constraints. So, the uh, uh, if, if in the UAV for example, if we say here as that the ceiling is 5000 feet, okay. this could be a high level uh, function, high level performance requirement that it should fly at an altitude of maximum ceiling, the top altitude is 5000 feet. That means that to an extent this you can further break it down into do what you call you can say the UAV could fly from an alt you can say 0 to 1000 feet is one band, then you can say 1000 to 2500 feet is another band and 2500 feet to 5000 feet is another band and at each ca cases what the system will do. Okay. You might end up because uh, these are the specific altitude at, at which uh, air density changes and uh, uh, or in, a, in another way to say it is when in our experience we found out that for a, such a small UAV uh, this transition of these separate heights there were specific changes in the per performance requirements. So, then you can say that okay, within this altitude uh, what is the RPM uh, ideal RPM for maintaining the cruise speed you can decide what is RPM for maintaining the cruise speed then you can decide what is RPM for maintaining this particular cruise speed. And so that at, uh, so then when you reach at this point you can say usually 25. Uh, 100 to 5000 feet you find usually uh, higher winds ok. So, then your indicated air speed will you are looking at an indicator air speed in this UAV we have found out that ok approximately 19 meter per second was the indicator air speed. And if you find out that ok find at that altitude you have a wind of 10 meter per second then you can ensure that your propeller or the engine does not need to rotate at a high rpm to maintain this indicated air speed. Uh, so, these kind of things you know that need to be brought down from just a ceiling is 5000 feet to level of various level of sub functions that we talked about and a performance or a design criteria that governs the development of the project that is requirement. So, this is in a way in simply put if I say simply put this helps to decide uh, how well the functions have to be performed. So, one example here is that uh, somebody would ask in your UAV do you have de-icing system? and big UAVs there are de-icing system, but since we are only flying at the 5000 feet the answer to that it is no, we do not need to perform the de-icing function. So, the how well the UAV need to perform the de-icing function it should need not perform it at all ok. How well it should be able to how well the UAV need to be stabilized at this altitude because this altitude there are a lot of type of winds. So, the platform needs to be the stability of the platform on the other hand stability should be extremely high. So, that is the other aspect of it. So, this kind of a trade off analysis that you can do as part of the system at different places that is also a part of this analysis. Then identify and define internal and external interfaces ok. Uh, so, the what interfaces? The interfaces are that of various functions ok. Identify and define internal internal and external interfaces of various functions. This is important because uh, the more functions you have usually more the functions more will be the interfaces and more the interfaces are more the additional issues that will come into picture. So, yes obviously, you have to identify all in external and interfaces as an important aspect of it of because you have different functions, but also at the same time you do this one identify functional groupings ok or identify, identify functions 
that can be grouped and we grouped. Uh, why do you need to group? To minimize um, control interfaces, minimize and control interfaces. So, the aim here is to do the grouping is to reduce and take control of the interfaces. So, lesser the interfaces or if you can group the functions together and those functions can be taken care of by a similar a singular component, then you can always say that okay, this is a good idea because what happens is it reduces your, it the, reduces the need of interfaces. The aim is to reduce the need of uh, external and internal interfaces. Okay. Fine. So then of so then there is another thing also that is part of it is called as a performing trade studies. Okay. Performing trade studies in a simple way put it is identify alternatives. Why do we talk about identifying alternatives? The reason for identifying al alternatives is uh, these alternatives are necessary to meet requirements. So, one example in the UAV was that what we ended up doing was the position of the UAV, we have both INS which is the inertial navigation system and also the GPS which is the global positioning system. The reason was because the GPS is not available all the time. This was the primary, primary for navigation. So, the heading and other things were primarily taken from the GPS, but also INS ran as the backup. The minute the system, the GPS connection goes away, the INS navigation kicks in and it will, it will actually control the UAV until the GPS connection is back on. And the advantage of this is that when the GPS connection is back on, uh, it has a reasonably good idea where it is and then the GPS signal can be used to triangulate further and this can be corrected at that point. So, this helped in ensuring that whether one signal is there or not, the UAV always know where it is. So, that you can always even in the worst case scenario, you could ask it to come to its home place. Okay. And there are other aspects also, uh, which is which is not listed here. One other important aspect that we would like to say here is do life cycle analysis uh, or identify life cycle functions. So, one important aspect is maintainability of the UAV is uh, I will take this use that as an example. So, there are many components electrical components who have uh, like servo motor was an example that is used to manipulate the control surfaces. So, these feedback servo motors had a definite life and obviously, the maintenance of them was a headache. So, we had to do during the functional analysis part of it, we had to decide which as we broke down, okay, this is the size of the elevator, this will be the servo that will be capable of producing this much of torque. Then these are the options available, let us pick this particular servo and when you are picking that servo, then you are looking at different aspects, you are trying to find out how much. Uh, what is the life of the servo, how frequently the arm of the servo needs to be replaced, uh, how much of the maximum load, what is the factor of safety available for the arm and all those kind of things of the uh, servo that was also uh, looked into picture, look, taken into consideration when that appropriate choices were made. Okay. So, please remember that these, these, there are these even though these 5 that we mentioned here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 along with the 6, uh, the one which is the life cycle analysis as well are the major uh, reasons why you do functional functional uh, analysis. There are other also small reasons that are quite possible 
Some people will say we do functional analysis to find out what all things need to be built and what all things need to be commercially bought from off the shelf kind of a thing. These are all part of this because at some point of time when you are identifying the functional groups and tra do trade studies, you will actually do identify the components of the system to a fair enough good extent. Okay? All right. So, uh, the important thing that you need to remember, this is quite important because why do you do this is something that is uh, very, very essential for us to do, as, as, as for us to remember. Because if you um, think about it, we had this loop where we had a uh, requirement analysis, from there we did functional analysis, then we would revisit the requirement analysis, okay. then we had design synthesis as the next box from where the functional analysis become the design synthesis and it will go back to functional analysis. So, where we would get the design loop and here is the requirement loop. Okay. So, the most important thing that you need to define is think about this, this is the most important aspect of functional analysis. It is not to design a solution, okay. it is not time to design your system. F A is not the time to design a solution uh, or design a system solution. This is not the time to design it. You are still doing the requirements, especially you are translating the user requirements into functional re requirements. So, the major aspect that we are trying to say here is you will keep on revisiting the requirement analysis because this, this loop, you will keep on doing this loop, okay. You will keep on revisiting the uh, requirement analysis step to resolve functional issues. Okay. Uh, so, like for example, something is not clear to you. Okay. If any functional requirement is not clear, go back to requirement analysis. to obtain clarity. Some cases you might even want to do the requirement analysis a little bit ag again to obtain clarity in this regard. So, the main objective, the main objective of FA is to identify functional performance and interface design requirements only. Okay. This is the objective, identify the functional performance and interface design requirements. requirements is not the time to design a solution yet. Okay. That is the uh, important part that everybody need to uh, remember in their mind. Yes, obviously somebody would ask why would we need to do this because during the design synthesis we again go back to the requirement analysis. Yes, sometimes because sometimes when you design then you will find out that okay, certain functions cannot be achieved at this whole thing. Uh, so, like for example, we were asked in the UAV system we were said can you make the UAV fly about 200, fly to a range of 200 kilometers and we were like it is doable, but within the appro approved altitude uh, approved weight of 22 kg the max we could do was somewhere close to 125 to 150 kilometer range not more than that. So, the uh, maximum takeoff weight MT or W to an extent ended up restricting this range of the UAV in our case because it has to carry certain communication uh, system and amplifier and the power requirements were. So, because if you increase the range then the power requirements of the amplifiers will increase which will reduce endurance. So, you will have to do some compromise at some point of time and that aspects what all functions it should do and how well. So, this is where the performance comes into picture. Okay. So, a different type of performance your performance in the UAV one top one of the performances will be on number one will be on range, two will be on altitude, third will be on air speed, the fourth will be on the uh, endurance, fifth will be on uh, functions. So, we said okay, this will only do ISR intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance missions only. So, these kind of things. So, if you want to increase the range, then you might have to compromise on endurance because of the payload restrictions on this and then that will in turn change the airspeed requirements. Once that changes, then it will probably influence the airspeed 
the altitude requirements and those kind of stuff. And then it might really result in adversely impacting the uh, stated objective or functions of the UAV to do um, intelligent surveillance and reconnaissance. Okay. So, uh, understand that this is this process in which we run through different aspects of the system and then we try to decide what to do, what not to do and how to do that. Okay. All right. Then we talk about something called as functional partitioning because uh, we mentioned that we need to actually group the functions. So, this functional partitioning even though it says partitioning it, it is actually a grouping process. What are you doing is it is a process of grouping functions. Okay. It is a process of grouping functions a grouping of functions that logically fit uh, with, with the set of components components that are likely to be used in the system development okay, so as to minimize uh, minimize interfaces. The aim is that the we group the functions that logically fit with the set of components that are likely to be used uh, in the system development. So, you have an idea of some idea of the components that are likely to be used in the development of the system and the aim is so that you can minimize the interfaces. Okay. So, typically this partitioning, partitioning is performed along with functional decomposition. So, when you are decomposing, you are also thinking about the set of likely components and as well as likely groupings. Okay. So, you think about the likely components and as well as the likely groupings. So, and we have a general idea of what the components that we are supposed to use. So, for an example I will give you when we are designing the UAV, we wanted we had an idea of what will be the GPS sensors or at least the list of the tentative. The tentative list of the U GPS sensors were there. Then we also had roll and pitch and your sensors okay likely list that was also with us okay ins uh, sensor ins systems likely list so these kind of things are available to us so then we decided okay finally at the end of the day we found out that okay we don't really need the your sensors because it is not necessary we can actually group that along with the gps and ins system so okay fine this we can do we ended up using that um, and then later we found out okay we actually do need the your sensors then the your sensor was put it back in but many of the aspects of identifying the heading you know also using the feedback from the sensors and fusing them together we found out that all these things could be interfaced directly with the you know autopilot system. So, rather than keeping these sensors separate they were all integrated as part of the autopilot system or the control system. So, that the interface that are required will be like just the interface of the autopilot and everything else is got embedded into that autopilot because it is a small UAV we did not require all those kind of things to be separated out. So, this is also what we call as grouping of the functions. 
because the UAV need to have two type of navigation the global positioning system and as well as INS, but they were grouped together into one single component which we call as an autopilot or in another way the uh, flight control computer. We in, uh, integrated all of those into the single uh, box which was so that way our aim was to minimize the interface on that. Also uh, other thing is the logical functional groups when you decide this you know when we talked about this you know uh, when you are talking about is it is a logical grouping okay this is the word we used this a logical fit a logical grouping. The logical functional groups is important because why is it to be logical? The logical functions it will allow or facilitate okay it will allow or facilitate the usage of modular components and open system design okay. This is important because you do not want to design every aspect of the system. Instead modular components allow easy maintainability. I would like to draw attention to something called as interchangeable parts concept interchangeable parts courtesy to Honda Motor Corporation who started this stuff. So, that uh, what happens is if you make a modular approach if anything goes wrong all you need to do is worry about the module and forget about the rest. So, if you find out that this is the error of the module all you need to do is change the module that is it system is back to normal. So, the modularity or usage of modular components okay, that allows you to actually achieve high level of maintainability and turnaround time, turn around time for the system. Okay. Other one is also about open system designs in a way that uh, the system that is allowed to be modified rapidly okay, or this is also allows for rapid upgradation and modification. So, we started with a GPS system and a GPS sensor and we found out that a new better GPS system actually came into the market and it actually follows the old interface as what it is, but it has a much higher refresh rate you can get much higher accuracy out of it. Then instead of changing all other things all you need to do is basically change the GPS module that is it and then the rest of the things actually would work uh, accordingly. So, these kind of a system design is also quite possible by allowing for functional partitioning even though where you are actually when you are decomposing the function you are also grouping them according to the logical fit of each of the functions. And also this also provides this grouping provides how the existing components will function within the system. So, one of the questions that we had was uh, we had to achieve at this is what will be the refresh rate of the GPS sensor. So, there are many type refresh rates are available with different type of sensors that you use and based on the so the, uh, the rule is higher the rate higher the cost. So, then we have to decide what is the accuracy that we require. The question came back to are we going to do autonomous landing slash takeoff. So, the user has clearly mentioned that it should take off and land from a 30 meter runway but they were they wanted manual takeoff and landing. So, there will be a trained pilot who will take off the aircraft from a from a runway or a flat surface and they will ensure that the aircraft comes and land at that particular location and the autopilot will be on engaged only after it reaches a particular altitude. So, then we were like okay fine fair enough uh, we do not require that very extremely high precision we require only sufficient precision in such a way that the aircraft can go to a specified location with reasonable level of accuracy. So, then according to which an, a GPS sensor was chosen with a sufficient refresh rate which actually provided the accuracy. From there then the autopilot system 
was derived de designed in such a way that okay fine Be you are getting the data and at some particular if the refresh rate is 10 hertz then we know how many times in a second the data comes in based on which the autopilot system was okay you are getting going to get the data at this frequent intervals. So, then from which you can calculate uh, where the UA, where the UAV is at that point. So, uh, obviously people will ask why did not you use a 100 hertz system or a 1000 hertz system. The answer is this was sufficient enough for us, for us to achieve this function. This was the logical fit okay. because it is there is no point in the overkill it have to perform a function and it has the performance requirements and the aim was to actually achieve the desired performance requirements all right. So, um, I also want to talk about this functional FA schematic and in the next class we will actually talk about uh, an example of how did we do the functional analysis and other aspects of it. But uh, in today's class the uh, uh, same way as the requirement analysis the functional analysis also has uh, four aspects to it there is the input aspects there is a control there is the enablers and outputs. So, if you talk about the outputs it is the the outputs are pretty simple the functional architecture and supporting detail simple. The functional architecture and the supporting detail of the system is the output of the functional analysis ok. What are the inputs ok? Inputs are the outputs of requirement analysis. So, whatever are the outputs of the requirement analysis that becomes the input to the system right. Then what are the controls? Controls you can think about the controls are number 1 will be the constraints ok. So, this is like uh, what we talk about it is cords ok that is commercially of the shelf items ok or uh, it is a GFE or the government uh, provided item that means you cannot really buy it as a specific item that is provided by the government ok. Then we also talk about system stuff like reusable uh, software ok and we also will have something called as organizational procedures. So, we will talk about an example of these kind of aspects when we take the UAV case and look into it how did we do the functional analysis and uh, the, we will run through each aspects of it. And the enablers this is another interesting list okay, of items. Enablers are these are some of the aspects is the as I said earlier is the multidisciplinary product teams. I have discussed the importance of the multidisciplinary product teams that we had in the UAV and how each teams were integrated into the development of the system where we talked about the influence of the uh, aerospace team, the manufacturing team, the communication team, the payload team, the um, also we talked about the packaging team how they actually get into this picture, we talked about the control team. So, all these multidisciplinary product teams are one of the enablers in achieving successful uh, functional analysis. Then the second one is the also what we call as uh, decision database. Uh, here is how or which uh, will be chosen and the reasons behind it. So, one example was that people said why did you not make the UAV as autonomous take off and landing. Uh, the answer to that and we have a decision database that actually tells what was the reason why autonomous take off and landing was not made as part of the uh, our the UAV that we designed because it was it, it was one of the customer requirements and as well as there were other reasons because the intended usages of the UAV and the price range at which it was supposed to be built 
uh, autonomous landing and takeoff would have been an extremely high proposition. Then also we talk about something called as QFD, quality function deployment. Many of you might have seen this, this is also called as the house of quality. It, it, it is, uh, um, I will try to cover this up in a, one of the class later, but it will look something like this. You have a performance and a requirements and there are aspects of it, then your competitors. So, you might have seen this, this is also, some also called as house of quality sometimes. But this is actually a very good design tool that is used in the uh, whole process. So, we talk about QFD sometime later down the road and we also talk about it as functional flow block diagrams. Okay. Then what we also called as, we also call it as requirement allocation sheet, allocation sheet etcetera. So, these are all you know and then we also have something called as DFD which is called as data flow diagrams. Okay. Then we also have as timelines I mentioned earlier then we have also called as BD which is called as not block diagram, but behavior diagrams. Okay. So, there are many enablers that are used to perform functional analysis in the system or conduct functional analysis. Okay. So, also as part of this you should also remember or you should also understand that what are the major actions that happens as part of this functional analysis. One of the major actions that happens is you define the states and modes of the system. Okay. That is the first part. You define and define the state and modes of the system. Second one will be the uh, uh, functions and external interfaces of the system, you define them. What are the functions and the external interfaces of the system? The third one will be the interfaces, uh, functional interfaces. This might be the internal interfaces. Then comes the next one would also be allocation of performance requirements from high level functions to low level functions. Then it will also be analysis or analyze performance. Okay. And then we will also have analyze or approach for analysis of failure modes, failure modes. Okay. And then you also have a uh, like methods to detect fault, integrate all those kind of things. You also have a mechanism to do what you call as integrate testing. I have shown you how we integrated testing is yesterday in the example, the previous example of uh, the UAV, how we at each level, at each more, each component of the system when it was developed, how testing was inbuilt into the system and how various aspects were conducted. So, there are many actions that are part of the system. Uh, so, the aim at is to take the inputs which are the outputs of the requirement analysis and you conduct functional analysis in which you perform multiple actions that are listed here to provide the output which is the functional architecture and the supporting detail which then will become the input to design synthesis. Uh, so, uh, what we will do today is and we said also there are many enablers that are part of the system and there are also many controllers that controls that are also uh, there which are their constraints you know sometimes you might say that okay uh, like when somebody asked for in our case of a the 200 uh, uh, kilometer range uh, of the UAV we said well the current constraint is the amplifier weight and power requirements they were a constraint for us. So, that constraint basically then controlled the uh, pretty much what you call us okay the UAV the max range it can go is up to 150 kilometers not more than that and uh, or if you have to do more than that then you have to increase the weight of the UAV. 
uh, or the capability of, for you to put in a much bigger engine and you would have to go pretty much into a new UAV. So, these kind of things uh, will be all part of this. We will discuss this in detail in the next coming classes, uh, but understand the most important aspect of it. The aim is not to design, as, I cannot emphasize this more. You are not talking about a design of the system at this point. You are basically translating the requirements into a functional requirements. You have not started to design yet the system yet, but you have at some point of time identified possible components, that is it. Uh, you have not made the design of the system. That happens in the next step which is called as a design synthesis. So, in the following lecture what we will do is, we will take a, an example of a functional flow blo block diagram which is a tool. We will go through this and we will actually take an example of how the UAV was used, uh, used it, which we will reserve it for the next lecture. Uh, thank you for your patient listening. Uh, good night.